Uh, my name is Katrina Rufeo. I would like to welcome you all, my friends in Smart Project. She planted on 7th December. Okay. Uh, she planted on 7th December. She inspected the field and on 8th of February the maize has started had started tussling. She came on 5th March and discovered that the maize is ready for green maize. So when she saw that it looks like it's ready, she said, well, let me try six cobs and cook them and see how this maize tastes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what she say is that when she cooked it and ate it, she felt like it had some butter on it. It, it was feeling a bit oilish and really tasting very good. And she ate a bit. She's wondering whether her health is improving because of this. <laughs> so there was a time of hunger where they... they they just had to eat all, all that they had. So, yeah, so they couldn't have any seed anymore. Same. Yeah, the last time she planted that was 1962. Yeah. The advent of uh, these uh, hybrid maize and the advertising, which had gone come with it, had uh, actually uh, um, uh, made us forget about everything which was uh, uh, we had uh, inherited before. Mm -hmm. I think this had uh, an effect on uh, how we sustain uh, the other crops. So I think there was a lot of advertising on the uh, hybrid maize and uh, that actually um, thought uh, we should uh, maybe adapt this. This, uh, this is the new varieties mm -hmm. at the expense of uh, uh, the, uh, the other crops which were being grown before. For her, the, the, the issue here has to do with the preference in terms of the characteristics of the two crops, the hybrid versus the, 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 the local. She has not had a lot of experience with hybrids because she has been preferring local maize varieties because she can get seed from her harvest uh, then she doesn't have to worry about buying. Uh, secondly, because she also has had the, the possibility of comparing the orange maize because she grows paper maize. That's one of the other crop that she grows. She grows paper maize. She, she has seen that when you grow the local variety, you can get from your harvest and, and you don't have to buy. When you take the orange maize, compare it with uh, Kanyani, which is said to be an early maturing variety. It's a hybrid. The orange maize is even more early maturing than the hybrid early maturing. So she thinks, well, why should I migrate to hybrids when I have uh, an, an alternative? And amongst her kids, um, from the flower that she has made, there is already a preference within her family for the orange maize. So she's saying, well, now I have found a crop that I can feed my, my family with. So it's, it's okay for her. It's, 
So she says, even within the area, it looks like there is a preference for local maize varieties, landris varieties. Uh, people do grow hybrid maize for sale. Uh, so they, they do sell when they grow. But even sometimes when people are given coupons from the subsidy program to go and buy hybrid seed, they sell the coupons uh, and, and buy other things because they, they really find it problematic to grow the hybrid maize. Uh, for those who grow, it's mainly for sale, not for consumption, ideally. Is, it, is, it, is that not a, a I think the, the old farm, the old families, maybe about 30 or 40 years ago, uh, the ones I know were in one to not necessarily very rich, but they were not poor. Yeah. They, they were food secure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the part of the strategy of growing the orange maize was to strengthen food security as well as wastage that goes with a good harvest. Asari kezele po mwepo, kumaso kumenda kupempa jitati zoko, awonjezele kupempa kote mbewe mene isasoroke, ipitilile, kumaso zipitile mpaka usoko. I'm hopeful that uh, the work that has started will continue, that these people who are working with us are going to continue guiding us on how best to make sure that we conserve the seed so that uh, it, we don't lose it again uh, this time around.